Today I'm going to talk about a particular emotion, bitterness. Drop the bitterness. We all have a satisfaction associated with doing something that somebody finds useful. Okay, so that was a grave introduction. What does that mean to drop the bitterness? Well, I picked the word bitterness on purpose. It's different than, you know, anger or frustration or jealousy or even, you know, certainly different than rage and hatred and everything else. But bitterness is something that we can carry for a long time. And it usually involves a certain event or a certain set of events, or it involves an, an attitude or opinion we have about where we are. So uh, I'll give you some examples. When someone talks about, so someone who works hard, let's say someone who has a job uh, as a, what we used to call blue collar or a factory job or something, and they talk about bosses or they talk about, you know, wealthy people, some of them just have no issues at all and there's people that do other things and they make more money and they do whatever. Others talk about things with a tinge of this bitterness, like um, it's not right, it's not fair, yeah, and it, you know, the tone is just, it, you know, kind of like that. And it's, it's like the feeling of someone did them wrong and continues to be wrong. And if there were a God or a government that cared or a just system in place, I wouldn't be here. I would be there. Sometimes it uh, revolves around talent. So someone has a really good talent and they've worked on it and developed it and the bitterness shows up by, well, I'm as good as they are. I could if I had the brakes. I could do just as well. I could be just like the if. And the if always is followed by something outside, like the brakes or the circumstances or their upbringing or their lack of training or poverty or, or resources or whatever it is. The key here is the cankering feeling. If you carry bitterness about something, it ruins you. It also gets in the way of making progress towards success. Let's do some specific examples and I can do some from my own life. So a relationship is ended and you know, when those things happen, people often act deplorably. They do things that later they look back and say, wish I hadn't acted like that. I wish I hadn't said that. I, I think it's because, you know, at the end of a relationship, there is always both guilt Internally, there is anger externally, there is blaming, there is, you know, whose fault was it? They did, I did, they didn't, I didn't. And, and there's also this big self-worth thing, like this thing that I was in, like and given my heart, soul, thought, feeling to is now ended. Is there something wrong with me? And all of those things play in in different amounts and, and, and different times during that whole process. And it's hard. There's no question, it's hard. And the hardening of that thing, that ball, sometimes it's like a kidney stone. It just sits in your heart and it just sits there. And it's not triggered all the time, but every once in a while something will happen and this bitterness will well up and it expresses itself in hard language or cruel statements, or maybe you don't even say anything, but there's this, there's this, ah, this sort of vicious canker or cancer that sits in you about a particular thing. It might, it might revolve around, uh, I've seen it happen with an inheritance where uh, someone passes away and they had an estate and the, the inheritance was divided up, uh, ho however it was, according to the will or whatever, and someone decides it wasn't fair, right, good, and so maybe they go so far as to mount legal challenges and squander a bunch of money and time and emotional pain, destroying relationship and everything to prove they were right. That might happen if there's a ton of dough at stake. It might happen if there's not, just because somebody is, um, ha has nothing better to do with their creative energy than to destroy. But often what happens is there's a bitterness, a ball of bitterness that comes out and then sits in a person's heart. And then from then on, when they talk about someone else that was involved or about the circumstance, it's always with that tone <clears throat> of, of that stone, that kidney stone, right? Causing pain. And I know that you've seen it, that, you know, an inheritance is an example, uh, someone dying, uh, sometimes a child dying, 
a lot of times that destroys relationships because there's all the blaming and then this this bitterness <clears throat> that stays. Blaming yourself, blaming others, and on and on and on. Uh, money causes it, death causes it, relationships cause it, failure causes it, envy causes it, you know, thinking someone else. I, I haven't been dealt justly with, injustice causes it. What I want to talk about now is I don't care what caused it. I don't even care if it was justified. I, I don't even know what that means. But let's pretend someone did behave despicably and they did mistreat you and they did do stuff that was reprehensible and should have been punished in the court of law or the court of public opinion or the court of something. Let's pretend that that's all true and you have a rock solid case. In most circumstances, you can't fix it. In most circumstances, there's nothing you can really do about it, and so you have a choice. You can carry the stone, the gall of bitterness. You can carry that stone around with you and have it flare up like a kidney stone and canker your life and heart from time to time, or you can drop it. Today's transformation nugget is drop the bitterness. In fact, go further than that. Make a move of reconciliation. Reach out a hand, even if you weren't at fault. Reach out a hand, even if it was all their fault. And do it again, even if they reject you. Let's talk about why. The act of reconciliation. We talked about forgiveness in an, in an earlier one. And about how to do that and things like that. The act of doing that gets rid of your kidney stone, first of all. Because if you're carrying the bitterness, nobody's feeling your kidney stone but you. Nobody's feeling that pain. And whatever you think you're inflicting on somebody else by your bitter attitude is about one-tenth of what you're experiencing. So unless you joy in carrying ten times the pain, drop it. Drop it. You'll create freedom for yourself. You might even learn to laugh at the incident or put it in true perspective that it doesn't matter anywhere near as much as this great pile of pain that you've accumulated around it over the years. You might create a new relationship or save an old one that you thought was beyond repair or that you put beyond repair by the way you have held on to that stone of bitterness for all these years. Bitterness cankers your soul Anger kills. Lack of forgiveness destroys dreams. All of those things are related. What I want you to do as the challenge is pick one thing. Something you know that you have a bitterness around. That wells up in particular circumstances around a particular topic or person or situation. And intentionally drop it. Work through your feelings. Forgive as required. But the key piece is drop the bitterness so that that topic, that story, that person no longer brings anything up for you. And you're able to move through your day and every situation in your own zone of creativity, in your own zone of love, in your own zone of power. Every piece of bitterness that you drop, you can replace with the soft stone of love and kindness and growth. Every stone of bitterness you drop will make you lighter, will make you happier, will make you more productive, will transform you into a better, happier, more joyful, more creative person. That's your challenge. Pick a bitterness. If you have a pile, line them up one at a time. Drop the bitterness. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching the videos. Take this opportunity, leave a comment, subscribe most of all, and don't forget to spread the word about this channel.